describe that. And I'm responsible for all the computers at Polk County as well as the geographic information systems. And I'll give you some examples of that in a moment. Um, what I'm going to go through today is just give you a context. How many of you are from Oregon? Oh, cool. I'm going to go really fast through the context thing then. So, and then I'll give you my two case studies. The two case studies are one where we use um, open source free software to accomplish a task. And then the second one is a description of using proprietary software with a community of collaborators um, to support a set of applications. And then finally, we'll have discussions. Um, given the size of the group, as I'm going through, if you've got questions, ask. Where's yeah. You know, I'm so glad you asked. Right there. Good question. Part of Salem is in Polk County. And in fact, well, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, Polk County's right here. It's about 740 square miles. Um, industries are timber, agriculture, and small manufacturing. Basically, we're small towns, rural farms, and timberland. This is not a typical valley county. This isn't it. Um, Clackamas County, no. Um, in fact, in many ways, if you, if you look at a map of Oregon and you see western Oregon, when there's no big roads, that's Polk County. And it just to the west is Salem. However, we are pretty rapidly growing. Um, we currently have a population countywide of over 70,000, some of those in West Salem. And um, what you can see is over the last five years, we've begun to exceed the growth rate for the state, which is kind of interesting for a small rural community. Lots of influx. County seat is there's Salem. So you asked the question too, you know, too early. Um, the county seat is Dallas. We have about 280 employees. Our total budget is 45 million. So it just gives you a, an idea of size. We're a typical local government. We're managed, for those of you that are familiar with um, Oregon local government, we are not home rule. We follow the state legislative structure for local government. We have a board of commissioners, three of them, that make the big decisions. Um, we maintain all the county roads. Um, our sheriff supplies um, all the public safety outside of the um, city limits, of which there are about four or five. So you're seeing almost 50% of the metropolitan area on that map. Um, we provide health services um, in the community, both mental health, public health, um, community development, people that want to build stuff, um, as well as assess and tax property, and of course, run the elections, do recordings of deeds and like, and of course, run the county fair. So that's typical. Um, GIS budget is $283,000 total, and that is fairly misleading because I have, um, and I have two and a third staff. I'm the third staff. Um, I have a number of hats that managing the projects as being one of them. I have one cartographer that's 100% funded and assigned to doing a mapping project. So take about 100,000 of that away for all the different things she does. So principally, I have a programmer uh, who does also support and myself who do some programming and coordinate. Um, we support well over 100 desktop mapping users using the product. SRI software for my advanced editing and my advanced users. Um, we team maintain a county website with mapping that has well over a thousand users. So you figure one and a third um, doing that work. Our goals for the program is it has to be better, faster, cheaper, or I don't do it. Um, new toys are not me. Um, we manage the land information as a county asset. It took us a long time to figure out that our land information was an, as important an asset as the county roads. So everybody buys off on that. Um, we don't mess with our assets and they're important to us. Um, we provide the tools and access so users focus on their jobs and not on technology. We don't make maps for people. People make maps, do analysis, as part of doing their job. So they don't typically send projects to the GIS folks and we do something behind the curtains and then deliver a pretty picture. Um, they make their own maps because I have too many people, users, and not enough um, techniques. 
We also, a very big part of this is then, because they're using our tools, and our, in effect, we're the, um, I don't want to say managers, caretakers of the land information, um, those tools and that inf land information has to be proven secure and very reliable. Um, I can't mess with that. If we say a piece of property is where it is, it's where it is um, within the constraints of assessment mapping. So if you think about it, our GIS data is in a, a controlled database environment. We have tools that we customize for our users and they're on the outside either making maps like a zoning map or seeing where the floodplains are or they're maintaining property and getting data in and sending it back. But that goes through my tools. Um, you know, I don't own the cows in the pasture, but I own the gate and I own the grass they eat. So it's, it's, a, it's not a dictatorship, um, but it's close. But it allows me to support a lot of different user, users with a lot of different views. So as we jump into this, so that's Polk County, that's GIS. Um, if you're not familiar with GIS technology, the examples will show it. But again, I'm not going to talk about GIS. If you do have some questions, I've worked for 10 years in a software company, FreeSRI. Um, I manage their regional operations in the Northwest. I've been a programmer, I've been a trainer, I've been a hardware person. Um, I'm pretty familiar with technology. Um, I'm not a researcher. I was done one, I was one long, long ago. I don't get paid by the county to be on the leading edge, a bleeding edge, and I can't afford surprises. My users, my commissioners can't be surprised. I wouldn't survive. Um, like I say, I have very few staff and lots and lots of users. My ratio is pretty good. Um, I have less than $25,000 a year to spend that is not people, desks, or paper and pencils that I, or the phone that I can use for GIS. That is support all my new hardware software purchases. Once I buy hardware and software, I have to pay maintenance, which means next year I get to buy less things. Um, it's to go to conferences and so forth. It doesn't leave a lot of room to buy things, being that maintenance is probably 25% of that 25,000. So big chunks gone. Um, I'm an old guy in GIS. I've been doing GIS for almost 30 years. Um, so I've seen lots of technology come and go. And, and I'm not overly impressed with new technology all the time or the new terms that go with them. Um, my big thing that turns me on is I have to meet my GIS goals and I have to have happy users. And, and happy users are users that don't complain. I have, they have to be able to do their jobs and they have to be doing it um, with a minimum of complaints so it works. Consequently, before I do anything or before my staff want to buy it or get new cool things, I ask why do we need it and typically is there something cheaper we can get. Um, I'd rather ride my horse than find problems to fix to justify new cool and technology. We don't find solutions and go look for problems. Um, I, we just don't have time. Um, that's the, all the context. So that's our program. That's where I'm running from. The two case studies I'm going to go through is using open source free software to develop a web-based mapping tool. And then the second one is a project we just completed um, this last spring which is developing a community of collaborators to share software and development responsibilities. Um, the first case study was really pretty neat, made me pretty happy. Um, the idea that I could get software that was free, that actually worked, um, was pretty fun. Um, developing this community has been very, very interesting for me. It's been, it's been a very good exercise. Basically what we did is we used open source to develop a mapping tool. Um, our problem was the public needs to use maps and map-related documents without coming into the county courthouse. Um, why? Visits to the county cost staff time and money. About 30% of one person in Polk County traditionally was spent maintaining machines, um, refiling little microfiches, and putting maps back in cabinets after the private surveyors came into our office and did research. We didn't want them putting their stuff back in the cabinets because they find them wrong. Um, but there's a third of a person then that did nothing but put things away and clean up a mess. 
Um, the other piece is, is oftentimes when the public arrives at the county, they don't know what questions to ask. And we spend a lot of time playing 20 questions, and the first question is, where do they live? So after you go through the whole conversation about what is the zoning and everything else, you find out they live in the city. And we don't issue building permits in the city, and then they go out to see someone else. Um, again, I don't have very many resources, and essentially we're trying to provide a better service to my users, my staff, um, that are county staff, and support them, support the public. We did this by partnering with some other counties. Um, these are the counties, um, for those that you don't know, in Oregon, where Lynn, Yamhill, Lincoln, and Benton, they surround and border Polk County. Um, we came up with the solution that we wanted to create a web-based mapping tool. Um, when we did that, that solution we decided had to be very fast, had to be easy to use, good functionality, we had to be able to adapt it on our own, we didn't want our clients to download some special software to make it work, and it had to be supported so we could continue to support it. Now what we did is we first looked at software alternatives, and I know that's a little backwards. Um, usually you look at your requirements and then look at your alternatives. We had to look at our software alternatives because whatever we looked at had to be compatible with what we used in-house. And so that defined some direction. Um, we then identified our requirements, evaluated them, built and tested an application, and then, as in all projects, monitored that over time for success or failure. Um, we looked at four software products, um, one being Map Server, which was the open software free tool, another using an ESRI product, which was um, an industry standard tool um, for managing um, GIS data over the internet, um, and those are the websites. We then looked at third-party folks that were developing things on top of the ESRI products, and then Alta4, which was an ESRI business partner that had a kind of a different way of managing content. All five counties used ESRI software, so we decided to constrain ourselves to those because they had very good interfaces with the ESRI technology. Specifically, when we got into our requirements is it had to be very fast. Much of Polk County um, does not have high-speed internet access. Um, our connection to the state at the county courthouse and at the city is still T1. Um, that's what we have, that's the world in rural America. Um, whatever we did had to be customized by my staff, staff in other counties, had to be very cheap, you already saw my budgets. Um, had to be supported, we had to find examples. We did not want to find a, didn't want a demo. Um, it had to be in production and it had to look good. So it couldn't be from a map server site from their gallery. We had to find out folks that were doing the job so we could see it. And of course it had to do the functionality. When I talk about functions, we wanted it like an ATM. Um, John Waffenschmidt from Lincoln County, just kept coming back. It should be as simple as an ATM. And we didn't pass that test. It didn't work. But our second version I think is going to be pretty neat. Had to be able to do standard map functions, pan, zoom, um, go to a location. We had to find features based on a query, find my piece of property, um, find Dallas. Um, we had to display multiple layers, including high-rise area photos. We had to point out a feature and see what it was. A lot of these map features are linked to documents. We had to be able to get to those documents. We wanted a good-looking map. And I know that's in the eye of the beholder, but we wanted a map that looked pleasing. And we had to, of course, support the Esri technology, and we decided we wanted to support TIFF images as well. Um, based on that, Map Server 1, and that's just this kind of a rough shakedown how it worked. We looked at speed. Map Server is very quick. The Alta 4 technology was pretty quick. Um, adaptability, most of the third party solutions had ways that you could um, quickly change their structure. The Map Server was pretty straightforward. Um, map server obviously was free. The Alta 4 was pretty cheap. Um, support scared us. Um, you know, we went to the map server webpage and downloaded the stuff, and there were some folks at the University of Minnesota that did a NASA thing, and you know, that whole idea of using this free stuff was pretty scary. Um, however, we did interviews with sites that use the different technology. Um, we were pretty surprised. People that like map server. We're pretty happy. People that use third-party Esri stuff were also pretty happy. 
functionality, this wasn't rocket science. You know, it was a basic map. We didn't have big transactions. We didn't have this, you know, analysis. We didn't have to do a lot of 3D things. It, it, you already saw the functions. Um, essentially, we developed the two tools to make this work. We had to have an administrative tool. Remember, we wanted something that could be easily changed. And so my staff built that administrative tool, and that was using a product called Map Objects and an Access Database environment. And then we had the web-based tool, and Lynn County did the pro programming for that. All told, the product, this is the development cost, was 25 grand. And we got most of that as a grant. It comes out to $5,000 a county. That's happy city there. Um, it took months to develop. I think we were six months in development before we were pretty close. Um, that included the learning curve. Once that was done, it took a few days to install. So pretty quick. Um, it's currently installed at Lynn, Pokey, Hill, and Benton. It's been stable since 2001. Um, and of course, we use Map Server on, micro, on a Map Server on a Microsoft server, and we had success. The public's using it. Our start page um, for mapping gets 10,000 hits. So this isn't the number of documents. It's not the number of total hits for the site. We have 10,000 people going there every month. And when you consider we only have 70,000 people in the county, and you know, some most people don't even know where Polk County is. Most of that traffic's internal supporting business. Um, that third of a county person that did all that filing is gone. We save 12,000 bucks a year. Um, that microfiche reader, we had two of them. They cost $10,000 each with thousands every um, year to maintain them. And basically the machines were obsolete. We would have had to replace those two at 20,000. I'm way ahead. Um, phone staff are referring the public to it. Feedback is very positive, and it's maintained pretty easily. I don't spend more than 40 hours a year maintaining it. Um, it's very, very stable. This is an example of the con administrative control structure. Um, basically, what you have at the top, it's, it's a menu system, VB code. Um, it lets you manage the basic web controls, where the website is, that sort of thing. It lets you define themes, which is where stuff's at, which then you can then manage layers into those themes in the order of where they go. Um, this is a typical interface. Um, you have a table of contents on the left, um, uh, an area that kind of shows you where you are in the county. On the right, some basic map controls. That's the Polk County Courthouse. Um, this is my farm, about 50 acres. That's my barn in the big white. We were zoomed in, you could see my horse. Um, cool part of this is, is that there's my name, my mailing address, um, my primary situs, number of residences, number of buildings. Basically, it's everything that's in the public about my tax information. And we've had this on the web for over five years. Um, so the idea that this is personal information and all that has not come up. What you can see in the top, there's a little blue area um, right in here. If you click on that, that basically brings up the tax roll. So you can see my property is significantly worth more than when I bought it. Um, the farm, the market value is almost 400 grand. I bought a clear cut, so it wasn't much. And you can also then bring up and see the photos associated with each building structure. Um, like I say, we've been displaying photos on our website for years. And photos get taken by the assessors every year when they go out and assess property. So we have thousands and thousands of build, pictures of buildings. It's maintained as part of our structure. This form is actually used by our appraisal staff as a quick look, and this is what the public gets. In looking at that, purchase price can't be beat. It was very cheap to make happen. Um, Support is variable when we dealt with it. Moving from, I have a contract, I call the person, they have a response time or they've been bad, to a community support took some getting used to. And that's where we felt MapServer was really not as efficient because we really didn't understand the process as traditional commercial software that we were familiar with. 
Um, the code variation was confusing. There was the Java version that did this. There was this version that did that. We had trouble figuring some of that out. Um, the system requirements, as you moved from those different source code, have to have Java for this, or they have to download something for that. It really, there wasn't one person we could call and say, what's going on? We had to kind of work our way through that and ask questions kind of in a public way. Um, the, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, did, did you have or consider having consultant hours, you know, a small number of them to deal with some of this? Um, in 2000, there weren't any consultants in the area that we even knew to ask. Oh, should have called them. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Interesting. Yes, and, and budget-wise, this was pretty low budget, and um, we wanted to figure it out ourselves. And it, so it was very interesting that way. Um, and you get what you pay for is so not true. Um, I moved out from a very traditional hardware, software, commercial environment, spent a lot of time asking the GIS community about this, and the response was, this is a really risky operation. Um, and so we were, I'd like to say, we're not on the bleeding edge. Um, actually, I copied, um, we didn't, wouldn't have never looked at this other than Tillamook County had built a little website that we saw as a demo the year before that was very quick and very cool. So that kind of brought them into the evaluation. And like I say, we were quite surprised that it actually worked as well as it did. Um, Open source now has become a, a viewed as a good source of stable functional software. And that was a big jump. It wasn't that, well, those university guys use that in a back room and, you know, they program at night in their underwear or whatever, what they said <laughs> earlier today. Um, that's not the case. It's good stuff. Um, it's part of our toolbox. It is what we use. And we evaluate it like any other software. I don't view us as now I've taken, you know, I drank the ESY Kool-Aid, GIS Kool-Aid years ago. Now I've drunk the open source Kool-Aid now. It's just another tool. You have to look at the functionality. You have to look at the maintenance costs. Um, the idea is you don't get what you pay for is true, but there's no such thing as free software, too. So it's all part of an evaluation package that is from inception and monitoring to make sure you can make it go in the future. So, you know. No big surprises there. It's IT. Yes. I, I, I can attest that at that time when you were looking at this, uh, you know, you, you see various different projects and you didn't know if that was the one that was going to die and next year not going to have work continuing on some other product. Did you have a user group that you uh, participated in or got? The we had five counties. We had Adam down at Lynn who spoke weird language um, and was trying to figure the you know, the map server side out. We had my programmer that was a VB guy, and that was it. And we I had a half a dozen folks to make it happen. I can testify that Metro got uh, information from Adam on, because he figured out the Java thing, and we wanted to be able to select and move them selectively, not just not right. like this, you know. And so we actually got Metro as the regional government for the Portland Metro area. We actually got this help from a, from a county. And, and, and once we got into it, we found those contacts, but I'm used to ESRI, there's a user group, I call Rod, say where do I find this person, and, and there's an established commercial business process for support, and, and there, that did not exist, which was, you know, I hate to say the, that stupid word organic, but it kind of is, and, and five, six years ago, definitely was. So, yeah, it, and then, like I say, as we got into it, um, Metro was a funny one, because at that time, they were the ones that told me, boy, you're making that mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're, we, I don't know how, I, I, I'm an IT guy, I don't know how our GIS people got connected up with you, that's why oh, I was about to use them. I've worked with Dick Boland for 20 years. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Yes? So, so you're a small county, you take on this project, what are the skill sets that, that your programmers are required to my programmer was not a GIS guy, so I did all the GIS translation. He was a VB programmer. So between the two of us, I translated things into chunks, and then 
once he got going, of course, he had it figured. Um, Adam actually was a person that was right out of school from, I think, Oregon State, and um, liked this stuff and was putting it together on his own. So when we sat down as a group to say, how do we figure it out? Steve Lucker, who was um, Adam's boss, said, well, I'll donate part of his time. And we said we'd donate part of our time. And then we found some funding through a grant for 10 grand. And that was enough to make it happen. Um, now, those, do those skills, those skill sets exist in the other counties as well? I'm just trying to see how you're, you're support. Well, what, no. What, and that was a, that's a great question because one of the things that happened that was very cool about it is Lincoln, Benton, and Yamhill don't have any of those skill sets. And so what we wrote was that little front end admin tool and the, um, the map server page, which is nothing more than a template that you fill in from an organized controlled database. So we had a little access database that said, these are your themes, these are your layers, this is how you look at them. And so if you understood that and could turn the crank and then remember to copy the XML, the places, and the maps folders to the correct map server place you have. And in fact, my programmer left in the time I waited a year. I watched Lynn and Benton and thought, you know, if somebody's got to fall on their sword, better them than me when we put that ownership out there. And Lynn County had some politics when they put the ownership on. And so I waited. Just figured, you know, let's just see how it looks for a little while. Um, so my staff had left. So I had different staff. I don't have HTML, hunky monkey gurus. Um, I had a VB programmer. And like I say, um, with Adam on the phone, um, five or six times over three days, we had it up and running. So, and Yamhill County, John Caputo is not a programming guy. And he had it running. And I know that um, the guys in Benton had some IS support, but I no, I went in quick. You know, the biggest problem is could you set up an IIS server and, and make that work? Um, that, that was as much a headache for us because we hadn't done it before. Um, so the directions of installing it were, and that's why we like Map Server. It's all file based. It's pretty simple files to read. So even if our administrative stuff broke up, blew up, you could still go in and read the file that says, oh, this is this map associated with this layer. And you could tweak it on your own. Um, tedious, um, but pretty low tech. Um, and, and we're looking at replacing this now. The, the site is you know six, seven years old. We've got different IDs on interfaces. We've learned a lot just, and the technology has come a long way. Um, I mean, it's going to be hard for me to be convinced and leave Map Server. Um, I'm not sure I want to, you know, the idea is we hit support a million users. We don't. Um, Map Server does deliver. Um, I think our largest data set is uh, one and a half million features. So we, we pump up some pretty heavy duty stuff. But I, I'm not interested in anything else beyond that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Have you thought about? I, I understand you have limitations, but you know, the kind of skill sets that you have. But have you looked at possibly moving away from IIS and using something like Apache or even running Linux with well, Apache? We're thinking about that, and um, that goes into our whole website design process, which is another hat I wear. Which another another group being it's another half individual from GIS me and a half web designer person. So yeah, and and. What will probably happen is that we will set up the new architecture, and, and we're very much looking at open source for that, primarily because of the success we have with Map Server. And once that architecture is set up, we'll follow that with a, a redesign of this application. And, and I don't know if we'll use Map Server or something else. Um, there's a lot of overlap with other projects with this. Any? Yeah. So what have you been able to give back? That's some of the cool things about open source that you've got Nothing. outside the group. This is a one-way street. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't know enough about the code to even send it back. Well, um, so you may not be able to send it back to map, map to map server, but can you, you know, have you put this stuff where other counties yeah, all five counties use it, and in fact, um, no, but I mean outside of that, you know, where Thursday I'm going. Service. I'm also a contractor yeah. part time, and as I'm only three quarter time with Polk County, so 
I have to fund those horses in that barn some other ways. Um, yes, two or three additional counties have taken that and making it and put it on their own system. Cool. So yeah, as far well, as <laughs> as far as collaboration, I, an important part of this is is this was a source of free software. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, I don't really contribute back to ESRI other than I pay maintenance, um, but I don't share my application code with them. So, and I think that really, that's why the next case study, which is the collaboration study, was so cool, and it was just so different because we went from ooh, grab it off the shelf, to okay, now we have to share it with other people that have it on the shelf. Any other questions on the map server? Um, I got to do a little background. How many are familiar with Department of Revenue? I assume most of the Oregon people, but a lot less people. Okay. Department of Revenue maintains, um, directs how property maps in Oregon are made. They've been doing this since the 50s. In about, um, in the early 1990s, you'll see down below that there is a digital map standard. Everyone that I've talked to at Revenue refers to that as the new standard, <laughs> as opposed to the stuff that was written in the 50s. Um, very conservative. Um, Department of Revenue also maintains maps for some counties. Um, every, every county is responsible for making those maps, and they all, in general, look exactly alike. And every cartographer in every county thinks they do it the best way. It's a very interesting program. Um, maps are maintained in several different scales at the 1 to 100 to the 100 foot level. That's a typical assessor's map. And really what we're interested in is property which is not legal property, it's taxed property, okay? So this is, if, if I own this and half of it was commercial, no, let's not use commercial. If half of it was a big field and half of it was my house, I could write a letter to the assessor and says, can you make me two tax lots? And they would. There's no relationship between this then is legal or developable, developable property. However, it is based on legal descriptions from deeds and so forth. And basically every property has things like dimensions. In order to have us be able to support the property assessment process, we also map lots of other features. Those features are for assessment mapping purposes only. You see the little thing that says uh, important up there? The fine print says, this map for assessment and tax lot purposes only. Um, so if you think about it, as far as the business flow, the assessor has cartography records and appraisers. They get all this information from the surveyor, from the clerk, from letters like I just described. And then they produce maps for appraisal and taxation purposes. And folks go out and appraise property like they come out and say, my value of my barn is worth so much. So that, that's the business flow of maintaining those maps. Um, in 1999, the legislature set aside, or actually told the counties, that they were going to add a buck to every document that got recorded that would go into a fund. Um, that funding was to develop a statewide digital and readily accessible map. They called it the Oregon map. Um, and using a semi-annual grant cycle, they provide funding to counties to assist in the creation and making that tax map available. And what's really fun, though, is that we all have the same maps. And now we have a data source that's going to help us out. Um, the ESRI users, remember I said before we use the ESRI software. Um, there were um, quite a few counties that use the ESRI software to make maps, been successful at it. These are now considered legacy systems. Um, they use things like the ARC macro language, which I think I'm probably the only one left who remembers how that software works. But I do and could speak it for you, but it's old and out of date. Um, we want to migrate with ESRI technology. Um, we need a new database design, something that supports it. We still have to produce those standard products um, our cartographers are not GIS whiz kids. They are cartographers. Um, we have, again, limited resources, which you've heard me whine about enough. Um, but we also have pretty similar business processes. But they're a little unique in every county. We created the ESRI ORMAP user group. And um, you can go to ORMAP.org and see all the ORMAP info. 
Um, what we did is we hired um, Nancy Von Meyer and got an awful lot of help from ESY Northwest, and we did these things. We did a needs assessment. We came up with a new design where we all agreed to how we're going to store that information, um, which given we had 20 counties participate with Department of Revenue, getting agreement took three years. It just was a long, slow process. We came up with a design. We tested that design. Um, ESRI came up with a whole bunch of help for us, um, prototyping tools. And then, you know, our contractor, Ezreal, left. And now it was up to us to own and make these tools work. And again, um, that's kind of what we went to. And now we get to the real problem, is that our cartographers that use ESRI software need tools to edit maps. I'm sorry, edit features and produce maps that meet the standard. So when my, this is how different the, the verbiage is. When I think of make map, I think of going into a software and say, you know, draw a box, put the picture on the map. When our cartographers thinks of making a map, they think of typing coordinate geometry in, and they're constructing lines that go into a map. It's a very different view, just within our own culture, of how this has to happen. Um, like I said, the counties have pretty similar functions. Cartographers aren't trained. We have a very small pool of programmers. And we all have an interest, a vested interest in making it happen. You start to see where the collaboration is going to go, specifically with the tools distributed programmers couldn't afford. You know, you saw the 25 grand. It isn't all that dissimilar in other counties. We couldn't afford to have our Esri folks come in and write us the code. Um, we couldn't afford contract programmers. Um, we also didn't want to get locked into one developer. And we wanted a lot of innovation. Um, and somehow what we did had to grow and evolve because as we made the maps for cartographers, we would find out what they didn't want. And we had to go through a pretty long iterative process to make it work. Um, the software off the shelf needed to be customized. As I told you, the cartographers are thinking in different terms. Um, similar softwares we want to maintain. And what that really got down to is we were willing to bear the disadvantages of a committee decision process. And committee decisions to make software work is, is different. So what we did is we developed an open source process for sharing the resources. And we've developed release 1.1 using ArcMap and 9.2 with coordinate geometry. I think this morning they were talking about that partnership between an open source environment with private. Well, this is a good example. Um, just to give you an idea of how it happened, the editor tools, Clackamas and Polk are the leads. We're using VB and VBA right now. We had diff two different mapping tool structures. Um, it's software administration, and I'll get into that, was Clackamas and coordination was me. And we made this cooperative. And the steps we did, we decided we were desperate. We were going to risk it. The idea of trusting Clackamas County, Eric's not here. Good. The idea of trusting. Back here. Oh, sorry. I don't have my glasses on. I gotta put them back on. Um, the idea of trusting Eric's guys. Oh, I don't know. Now that you're here, I can abuse you even more. Um, I'm a control freak. You know that whole context back. I can't afford to make mistakes. So the counties and Department of Revenue. Um, actually studying it's trusting a state agency to be part of this again gets you into issues we all volunteered staff we developed this organizational structure using an open source central support model to make it happen we started writing code um, we developed tools and developed this process for sharing our code made our first release one of the big things we did is we made not an open source communication standard but we just had to do something as simple as getting all the programmers to be to agree on coding standards. That again took a while because um, my coding standards are always the best like any other program. So we had to compromise and this was a good, I guess, first, <coughs> excuse me, this was a very good first exercise. Not a lot of risk, lots of ability to disagree and start forming that relationship. The process we did um, to make this happen then that we evolved out is a county would make a user request for a change. That could be, I want something new. 
Um, and we decided to use SourceForge, and that's the website. Um, once they made that request, they would have to be sponsored by a county with a programmer. You can't, you know, modify it unless your programmer agrees to the terms and conditions of being in the group. And it's not like you signed a contract, it's just our informal agreement. They partner with a, some county that has a programmer, or if they want to volunteer their programmer into the group, we can go through that. Um, part of that is, is they have to go through and create a tool design document. And a tool committee then helps them make that document, they present it to the tools committee, and says, this is an approved tools project. Now remember that DOR, they have money. So we can go then as a group and ask them for money. And our deal with them was, was only through our process will counties ask for money for tools. So that was a big win-win for them because suddenly they didn't have to evaluate 20 counties asking for the same mapping tool. They could just say, oh, you guys are coordinating all that? Great, we're not gonna look at anybody else's. Um, any county could make a project happen, but to go through this, you had to go through this formal process. Um, the counties perform that work in their own space in SourceForge, if you will, in their own branch, and they would test it. The test county, being the county that requested it originally, would then have to make sure it worked on the different environments. They would then present the tool to the committee who would say, good job, or you know, go back to the drawing board. At that point, the SourceForge administrator would then wrap it into our code. Um, we'd test it in the next release, we'd release it. Um, once the tools committee said good, they'd get their money if it was a grant supported project. Pretty simple steps. Like I say, we're a small group and we're not very complicated. Um, the design document actually, we stole um, Marion County, being a large county, has a very, very formal process for adopting and making projects happen. Um, we took and modified a bunch of their design documents. So before you can make a project, you've got to fill this document out which says what is your tool name, why are you doing it, what's it going to do, um, requirement statement and a simple design. And then every, that gets stored on SourceForge so everybody can see that through the life of the project. Again, that helps drift projects, make sure that we're actually doing what we said. And you, you know, this is typical SourceForge stuff. Um, any user can go to this site and put a request in um, any county can then take that on as a project. Um, funded projects, of course, have to be agreed to before we start. Um, we use Tortoise Subversion to get the code out and put it back in. Pretty simple process. Um, Clackamas, as much as I like to harass Eric, um, a key to that is Jim, the guy who then administers that code in SourceForge. And that's some of the issues. Um, we needed a software administrator and a host. So SourceForge is working pretty good for that. Um, Clackamas County is managing that. We actually have, if you go to the org, map.org website, that gives you the links to get to the SourceForge because I can never remember what they are anyways. Um, we had to have the developers, programmers, who are actually going to do the work. Um, counties can spend any amount of money. Um, so. It, for example, if I had a project that I delivered to the group and they said, eh, as long as I was following the process and I wanted to put my own money in, I could do that. Of course, then I can't come back to RMAP and say, now can I get paid for it? That all has to come up front. Um, part of that is user documentation and helps. Um, so this is that mixed environment. We released our code. Editor 1.1 is done, available. The two plotting production processes are done. Um, the helps are done, and I'll show you one of the help files in just a second, and we released the software last spring. What we're going to do next is probably move to the .NET environment. Um, I think Lane, Council of Governments, is pretty interested in doing that. Um, getting the cartographers trained and up to speed is something. Um, based on that, we're identifying new tools. Um, one of the big issues we have is people are maintaining these maps, and now because we're meeting Department of Revenue standards for mapping, um, digitally, we have to come up with some new digital quality control tools. And so that'll be on there. And we want to continue to explore these help files. I, you know, it was a success. We collaborated, we made a process, we followed the process. 
pretty important. Um, we've lost and replaced programmers. Um, I've lost one programmer, I gained a programmer during this time. We're still running. We lost our administrator, who was Dave down in Jackson County. Jim from Clackamas County picked it up. Um, and we've lost three programmers and replaced them in different counties, and we're still making progress. Which, had I lost my one programmer and just had it mine, I'd be dead. So that spreading around is pretty cool. We released the code. We're still talking. You know, sometimes when you do these things, you get done, it's like, I never want to see them again. <laughs> no, we're still doing this. And our users are using the application. This is a little help file. No? That's why we're working on our head files. It worked last night. <laughs> um, in fact, let me uh, end this really quick. And, uh, come on. <laughs> okay, let's go to the ABI one. Never mind. Basically, what it is, is it's a video of the. Uh, one more way to do this. There we go. Zoe's way around. Basically, this is the help. You select a polygon. There's the polygon. Um, we're going to then number this. We're then turning an auto increment on. And our first um, spot that we're typing in is tax lot 200. And what has to happen then is then I'm going to click on the map. And what you'll see on the bottom is, is I've entered in 2,500. And there's all these little cool things down here. The idea is you can't read that one, but see how big that one is? That's information we have to deliver to Department of Revenue. And it's this big. Well, key punching all that in would have been a nightmare to get it right. Cartographers are not key punchers. Um, so what that happened is, is that all of that happens automatically. And because I have auto increment turned on, it is letting me then click the next one, click the next one, and it's incrementing them by hundreds. So no key punching except on the first one. And when I've clicked them all, all of those attributes are there. And it's in an, all in a nice little menu. You know, it says type of polygon, auto increment, the starting number, pretty simple to use. And when they can't remember it, provided they can do a, a with video wave file and not go through the validation process, this is built into their helps. So they can remember how, so they don't have to read anything. Again, they're cartographers, and that would be great to do. Now it's going to do the video. Nice. Um, we had success. Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> there we go. Technology. Um, and again, I think one of the biggest things is we were desperate and willing to try it. Um, the open source model happened. Um, I think Dave from um, Jackson and Jim from Clackamas had been in this environment before. Um, we evolved into it. We didn't go looking for it. We were basically stuck and said, how are we going to put this together when there's so much customization that we know has to be built over years? Um, we had a vested group. Um, it worked because the members were willing to compromise and then follow the compromise. You know, you can sit at a meeting and say, sure, 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 we'll do it. Then go do what you want. They're actually following their rules, which I'm not sure I would have done if I was the programmer. So I hats off to them. They're a great group of guys and girls. Um, the work was divided. One of the cool spots of this was that different users took on pieces. We're in the middle of map construction at Poe County. I could give a rip about making plots to send a revenue. I need to get different pieces of my maps done fast. So my programmer is really working on editing. Well, Lane County has really been doing the maps for years. They want to make maps for the front, county. So their programmer is really into that. And a lot of times our meetings basically start out with me doing this thing that I do. And then it breaks up and the mappers go in this corner and do all this weird mapping talk. The editors go over here. And they all pull out their laptops and they basically collaborate in that environment. And that group 
isn't like sticking their head up and looking at this group saying, now are you screwing it up? There's that level of trust between them. And I know the work is getting done. I trust Clackamas' programmers to do their part. They trust my folks to do their part. Um, very interesting. However, trust aside, somebody needs to administer this and bring all the code together and make sure that the redundancies or the conflicts, the conflict management that can go on with code coming from disparate sources gets resolved. Um, I was the group facilitator, like I said, it's pretty doggone informal. Um, and then we have that control of the software. Questions? Yeah, Dean, um, I, I may have missed uh, your slides that made cooperative. Did you have an intergovernmental agreement or did you form a cooperative? We have a cooperative. Is we all we have Legal become no cooperative. We have become no. We didn't like make a 190, which right. is a, under law how yeah. you can do stuff to make decisions. No, we are the ORMAP user group. So we the only way you can get money for Esri tools is through the Department of Revenue is by having and we have a contract legally as a group with uh, revenue to dispense yeah. funds. Internal, we don't have an agreement. So, for example, for this fiscal, we have a $25,000 grant from revenue to fund programming. Within our group, I don't have an agreement that says, well, Eric gets five for Clackamas, Dean gets five for Pope. It's all based on agreements about the projects. So, legal up here to get money, internally, no, we just do the work. Um, and like I say, we've been working together a long time. It's working fine. And, and that really makes it that collaboration. Any other questions? Yeah. Licensing, what, what, what is the license? Um, whatever li ESRI charges for their stuff, um, ours is free. Download away. What license are you listing in public domain? What are you, what are you it doing? is in Source Forge, and anyone can download it. There's no constraints on it. However, it's built on our data model. It won't work unless you use our data model. And that's not licensed either, by the way. Um, and it's built on ESRI's ARC objects and the ESRI software license. And of course, you have to go to them to get that. But for the code you've produced, you haven't attached a specific open source license or anything like that? No. It's, yeah. it's public domain. It's in the, you know, SourceForge has public, well, however you do that, it's in the public area. Okay. We don't put any constraints on it. Well, I mean, it's complicated. I mean, we should talk. <laughs> okay. It and, and, and really, it is built by us to support counties right. in Oregon. Right. And essentially, once you leave our group, if you're a source for it, fire beware. Yeah. I'm, Obviously. And yeah. uh, are other counties outside your cooperative starting to pick it up? Or they um, what's very fun about it is the Tools Committee is only six counties. Yeah. And there are 19 counties now that are migrating to our data model and using it, and they don't have programmers. Right. So yeah, yeah, cool. And the and Department of Revenue um, is way behind this. And in fact, they've got seven counties converted, and they're using the tools in-house. So yeah, it is, it is working that way. And it's kind of interesting because, for example, Lane Cog, the Council of Governments, actually isn't part of the group, but they do programming for Lane County. Lane County is going to probably require, ask for money for the COG. So we actually have contractors working through that process, if you, if you will. So it, it goes both ways, which is kind of interesting. So like I said, this is a very um, fun project for me to be involved in because um, the previous editor um, that Polk County used, I wrote all the code over three years, and that was drove me crazy. So this idea that there are all of these folks that are doing this and really focusing um, one of the, this annotation problem, you know, the idea that I can have someone for three months make annotation easy to use and knowing that someone in another county is as, as geared up as my programmer is to do something else, wow, um, spreading those resources out and having lost my programmer and then now my new programmer is going to go to the tools committee on Halloween and get up to speed about where everything's at. 
So it, it's got this built-in mentoring process that um, is very fun because the other folks that are using editing want that person going so they don't have to do all the work. Any other? Yes. It's great to see the state DOR behind it now that it's a success. Do you feel like they could have been more proactive? And they were proactive. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Department of Revenue has been the best. Okay. Um, you know, I was quite concerned about that, Department of Revenue. The guys who manage the tax money are typically conservative state to state. Um, format didn't happen, which is that dollar funding, without Jim Maneri, who was deputy director. So right from the get-go, Jim, in the funding. And then the second thing he did within the ORMAP environment is he went to every county and said, look, this money is coming to us, but you guys do the work, and let's us figure it out. Yes. And, and he set that context, if you will, to make it happen. And so the money, dispensing the money, <coughs> we actually get together as a technical committee, and all the grants get evaluated before they get passed to revenue. And we have like eight things that kind of gets the technical group a stamp of approval. And almost all of them do because it's actually a two-phase process. I propose, gets rejected, I rewrite it, and then it, and maybe change what I'm trying to do. So it, it, the evolution of our group really fit within that context that came from revenue. So no, they didn't jump on at the end. They were in the, the beginning. And a lot of it is, is that we have that 50 years of relationship of revenue mapping, every map being the same in every county, and all of these cartographers being together. This is a very cool culture. It is 12.02. I'm all done unless there's any other